In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving ceases, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ. Dust in. in Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God and helpless be this gift of love and righteousness, scored by the ones he came.
Hey everyone, welcome to Cornerstone. I am so glad that you are here joining us again this week. Hey parents out there, if you haven't already, please make sure that you are checking out the lesson plans that have been put up there for Cornerstone Kids and for Crave Student Ministries as well. It's very important as we continue this social distancing and this, this uh, learning remotely that we are still making sure that our kids are learning and learning together. So make sure if you haven't already, click on those links, download those lessons, and make sure you're doing those with your kids. For everyone else, I'm so glad again that you are here. We are continuing this week talking about the spiritual disciplines that we need to develop into our lives. And in prior weeks, we've talked about the, the uh, spiritual uh, discipline of Bible intake or reading and studying and hearing God's Word. And I, I pray that was an encouragement to you. We also talked about the spiritual discipline of worship. And that worship moves much more than beyond just the realms of music. It, it encompasses every part of our life. It's to worship God in spirit and in truth. And I, I pray that you've been able to make some practical applications for what that means for you. Last week, we talked about the spiritual discipline of prayer. We talked about the, the development of prayer and how you develop and, and learn how to pray. Very much like a child, a young child who has to learn how to speak. Or perhaps you've learned another language and, and you've had to study French or study Spanish. In the very same way, we need to learn how to pray. Learn the language of prayer. And I pray that you were encouraged by that last week. And I also encourage you to do this. As you're watching us this morning, please chime into those comments below. Interact with us. Let us know how you're doing. Let us know if some of these things have been helpful for you. Let us know any questions or concerns that you might have. I would love to speak to you outside of the realms of Facebook and YouTube as well. So please let me know. Hey, Pastor, I want to get hold of you. I would love to connect with you. I would love to talk with you. I would love to encourage you. But as we continue today and continue this sp series on spiritual disciplines, today we're going to focus on the spiritual discipline of service. So I want to begin this talk by asking this very simple question. What does serving or service mean to you? Now I've asked that question about the other disciplines as well. I've asked you what do you think about when you think of the word worship? What do, I, what do you think about when you think of prayer? So I asked you the same question in regards to serving. What does serving mean to you? Some of you might say, well, serving is helping others, and you're absolutely correct. The others might say it's something that we do in the church to help out. We volunteer, we, we come and we work readers at the front door, or, or maybe we help uh, make the bulletin, or maybe we serve in, in the ministry of the worship band, or, or volunteer in, Corner, in, in Cornerstone Kids, or in the nursery, or in the parking lot. And yes, all those things are correct. Others might take service and, and extend it outside the confines of the church, and they might say, well, serving is when we go out into our community and we help others around us. Absolutely. Service also includes things that we do outside of the church as well. We have a perfect example of serving that's happening in our community right now. With this crisis that we're currently going, going through, we have seen a number of people, and we, you know, they've been labeled the essential workers, but they are people that are serving each other. They're, they're the nurses and the healthcare workers. They're all those frontline staff that are doing those very difficult jobs. They're the people still working in the grocery stores and working so that we can continue to have the things that we need and to take care of our loved ones and take care of those who are ill and sick or, or take Taking care of those who can't take care of themselves. And absolutely, that is part of serving as well. Today, we're going to tackle the spiritual discipline of service. Yes, just like Bible intake and worship and prayer, serving is a discipline that we must develop and we must practice in our lives. Now here at Cornerstone, we talk about serving a lot. In fact, usually at the end of every service, I go up on stage and I talk about ways that you can serve, way that, ways that you can volunteer. So we, we call it a number of different things, and we've used words like, like volunteering. We've used words like, we need someone to help out. But at the end of the day, that is the ministry of serving. And, and today as we continue on this series of spiritual disciplines, I want to tackle the subject of, of service. I want to help each one of you discover what your gift to service is. There's, there's two main points that we're going to look at today, and I hope that you can and will apply these things to your life. So before we dive in this morning, let's start by beginning in a word of prayer. God, thank you for this opportunity we have to learn. Thank you for this, this series that we're going through, these foundational principles of spiritual disciplines and how to develop them into our lives. And, and very light, much like reading your word and, and, and worshiping and, and prayer, God, serving others. 
is this discipline that we need to, to look at into our own lives, we need to develop, we need to practice. And I pray for each and every one that's listening and watching this morning, that you would help them think right now about the gift and the discipline of service. In your precious and holy name, amen. Point number one today, service is an expectation. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14 says this, How much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the internal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our conscience from acts that lead to death, so that we may serve the living God? See, when God calls us and we become Christian, He doesn't call us to live a life of, of idleness and live a life of just being stagnant and not doing anything. God calls us and redeems us so that we may be, be examples for Him, that we are glorified through Him and so that we can glorify Him. And we do that by serving other people. Author Donald Whit Whit Whitney says this about serving. He says, God's word has no place for spiritual unemployment or spiritual retirement or any other description of a progressing Christian not to serve God. You know, it's interesting. Uh, I, I know many, many pastors in my life, obviously within my own family, but even outside my family. And I've never met a pastor who has retired completely from ministry. Now, I, I know some pastors who, who maybe have stepped back and, and not maybe the lead pastor of their church, but, but every pastor that I know still serves in some capacity. And, and, and that's the same thing that we should be said for, for all Christians, regardless if they're, if they're called to full-time ministry like a pastor or a missionary or any other kind of worker. Each one of us is called into service. And as Whitney had just said, the God's word, the Bible doesn't have any place where it talks about we are being spiritually unemployed or, or spiritually retired because it's a progression. As you develop your life as a believer, as you develop these spiritual disciplines in your life, you're going to see that there's not a stopping point. Our stopping point is for one day when we are redeemed and we, we are up in, in, in heaven with, with God and Christ at His right hand. That's going to be our retirement. But for the life of a believer, our, our job here on earth is never done. And your job and your service will never be done until that time. But that's not meant to be a discouragement for you. You know, here on earth, we look at retirement. We have a certain age maybe that you're aspiring to retire at. And you're counting down the days and the years and the months, whatever, till you get to that point. And I want to discourage you and say that as a Christian, there's never going to be time for, for relaxation. There's another discipline we'll talk about shortly in the next few weeks called the dis discipline of solitude and silence and, and meditation and, and, and talking about uh, taking care of yourself. And I'm definitely going to speak about, upon that. But I want to tell you this morning, and as a believer, your responsibility on this earth never ends when it comes to serving others. To help us understand the concept or the motivation behind serving, I'm going to show you three things this morning that the Bible teaches about serving and the motivations behind why we should want to serve. And the first one is simply this. Uh, it's motivation by gladness. Psalms chapter 100 verse 2 says this, Worship the Lord with gladness. See, God expects us to serve with gladness. It's part of our worship, our response back to Him for all that He has done for us. So you remember when we talked about worship a few weeks ago? See, worship is a response to the moving of God in our lives. Serving should be done with gladness for what God has done for us. It is our thanks to Him. We should never view service as an obligation or, or as a burden, but rather as the privilege that it is. Do you serve with gladness? For those of you who, who already have some ministries and, and you kind of know what your gifts are and you're utilizing those things, are you serving with gladness? Do you serve others because of what Christ has done for you? Or maybe you do it because you have a sense of obligation. See, we should be motivated to serve out of gladness. And I hope that you understand that. And I hope that you're able to, to get that this morning. The second motivation that we're going to talk about is we are motivated by love. Galatians 5.13 says this, You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. See, think about this way. What kinds of things uh, do you do for your family or for your friends out of love? And, and again, I use this all the time, but I'll speak for a second as a parent. I have done some really 
gross things for, uh, for the love of my children. I've changed countless diapers, not more than my wife has, but I've done a, quite a few really nasty diapers myself. And, and as a parent, you probably have done the same thing. And it goes beyond messy diapers. How much time and energy have you spent doing homework with your kids? Or, or spend countless hours sitting out in the cold freezing rain watching a baseball or soccer game or football game, right? We do things that are love for each other. Maybe it's for your, your parents, maybe it's for your siblings, maybe it's for your friends, where you sacrificed your time, your abilities to help somebody out. And you don't do it out of obligation. You do it out of being motivated by love for that person. There's no greater motivation than love. There's no greater motivation. We do some amazing things in the name of love. We also do some pretty silly or stupid things in the name of love as well. Think of all the things that, that you've done because of love. In the Bible, it says this in 2 Corinthians 5.15, it says, They no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Also remember in Mark chapter 12, verse 30, it says this, it says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and with all your mind and with all your strength. And the second is this, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than this. See, love is a powerful motivator. Love enables us and gives us courage at times. Love allows us to sacrifice of ourselves because of our love for somebody else. So how does that motivate us to serve? We are motivated by love to serve because we want to see other people come to know Christ. See, that's our mission as believers. Right? To serve our, our living God and to help point people in His direction and to help lead people to the saving knowledge that they can have through Christ. So we are motivated by love. The third motivation this morning is we are motivated by gratitude or, or thanksgiving. So think about this way. Think about your life before you surrendered it to Christ. Think about the, the life that you had, the life of, of sin, that life of, of anxiety and of anger. Think about the relationships that you had and that were falling apart. Think about just the, the discontent that you had in your heart and in your thoughts because you were longing and, and to know a Savior. And think about what God took you out of. And think about what God put you. Think about the blessings that you have in your life now. Think about maybe the relationships that you're currently in. Think about the children that He's blessed you with. Think about the opportunities, the jobs, whatever He's, he's given to you. The gratitude of what our God does for us is another motivation for us to serve others. We are motivated by our gratitude. 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 24 says this, But be sure to fear the Lord and serve Him faithfully with all your heart. Consider what great things He has done for you. So as we talk about serving as an expectation, I want to make sure that we're understanding there's a difference between an expectation and an obligation. And, and yes, the Bible does speak a lot about serving. It talks about how as we are redeemed through the blood of Christ, we should, we should be honoring that. And we should be examples of His love towards us and show that love to other people. And I guess you could say, well, that sounds like an obligation. But it's not an obligation. It's a response to the great things that God has done for us. See, it very much ties in the spiritual discipline of worship. Again, worship is, is our response to the things that God does for us. It's our way of, of showing Him our love and our gratitude. Things that sound very familiar because we just talked about them. Serving other people is an expectation. Serving other people is something that we should want and we should desire to do. Not out of obligation, not out of some workspace system, but because it, it's honoring to God. It's an expectation. The second point this morning is this. We are gifted to serve. See, God just doesn't give or create the expectation that we are to serve other people without also giving us the tools that we will need to, to be in service to other people. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 10 says this. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. I believe that when you become a believer, when you, become, when you accept Christ into your life, that you are then gifted, a spiritual gift. And that gift is meant to, to edify 
and to build up a body of believers. It's meant to, to serve in the local church. And overall, it's meant to enhance and, and to, to build on the kingdom of God. They're, they're, they're not meant for a personal gain or for a personal glory. So perhaps you've never heard of this concept before, but I assure you that it's true. Uh, maybe I should make this a future message series, and then I very well might do that in the next few months, talking about developing of your spiritual gifts. See, it kind of goes very, long, uh, very much along with the development and the practice of spiritual disciplines. Because again, these spiritual gifts are the tools that God gives us to be able to do the things that He's instructed us to do. Many people struggling, they struggle with figuring out maybe what their, their gift is. And to see, that's okay. Sometimes it takes people years and years of trying and, and, and figuring out what, what, they, what are they led towards? Where do they feel their talents or abilities are? See, it takes patience. It takes a, a, a great reliance on God. It's why this is a discipline to develop. Remember, disciplines are not just things you wake up one morning and you're good at it. Like anything that you have to, 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 to get good at, whether it's a sport, whether it's a musical instrument, whatever you have to, to practice, those are disciplines. Those are, those are things that you have to work on. And again, the, the, the spiritual disciplines of worship and prayer and of, of, of reading God's word and of course of serving, those are things that we need to practice in our lives. We need to, to every day devote ourselves and commit ourselves to enhancing these skills and enhancing these things in our lives. And so very much spiritual disciplines and spiritual gifts are then tied together. Now again, I know here at Cornerstone, if, you, if you've come here and, and, and been part of our services in the past, I know that you've heard me, I know that you've heard Pastor Mike talk about serving or again volunteering or helping out. And, and so the idea or the concept of serving should not be new to, to, to most of you, right? But maybe you feel limited. Maybe you feel that you don't have maybe the time in your schedule or, or the talents or the abilities to serve God. And let me tell you, if you have accepted Christ into your heart, He has already given you gifts. But you need to figure out what those gifts are. Now we'd be glad to help. I would be glad to sit down and talk to you. But sometimes I feel the best way to figure out what, you, what your gift is and what God has enabled you to do is just start doing stuff. You might start a ministry and realize, hey, that's not the ministry for me. I don't, I'm not, I don't feel that it's, it's doing uh, what it should do in my life. Well, then you can try something else. But the point is you got to try. You got to practice. You got to figure out where your gifts and where your abilities are. For some of you, it might be very clear, very, 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 um, very noticeable. You might have a real gift for teaching. You love to teach. And so teaching in the Cornerstone Kids or, or teaching our kids in, in our nursery is a natural thing for you. And it could be. Maybe some of you played musical instrument and you're saying, well, that's, I know that's a gift, that's a talent I have. Well, are you using it? So you can, you can possess these things, but if you're not using them for the glory of God, then what's the purpose of even having them? If God has given you a talent, whether it's a, to play a musical instrument or to teach kids or, or just a talent to organize and to clean and, and, and a talent and an ability and empathy to, to care for other people. If you're not using those gifts, then why do you even have them? Gifted to serve. Let me say this this morning as well. Service is also hard work. See, it takes practice. It takes discipline. To do anything correctly, you need to, to practice hard at it. Paul writes this in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verses 12. He says to the church of Ephesus, he says, The equipping of the saints for the work of service to the building up of the body of Christ. See, Paul recognized that for those, those believers in that church of Ephesus to, um, to, to build up and, and to glorify Christ and to build that church, it took hard work, it took dedication. See, that message is still the same today for our church, for churches across this world. S service and, and ministry and serving is exhausting. I want to use an, a really practical and a good example of, of that here at Cornerstone. You know, every year, for, for a number of years now, we have our Kids Summer program, uh, and, and it's an annual thing. It's for a week-long Monday through a Friday event. And I can tell you, as someone that's been actively part of that ministry since we started it, after the first day 
We are tired from, from running the activities and running the music and, and, and doing the lesson plans. And, and I can tell you by day two and day three and day four, we are physically exhausted. And by the end of that week, on that Friday night, I can tell you for everyone who takes part of that, and if you have volunteered for this event, you know how exhausting it can be. It is tiring. At the end of it, we were just sitting down and after we're done cleaning and just exhausted and tired. But I can also tell you that there are few things that have been more rewarding in my ministry here at this church than by, and then, than by taking part of that ministry. It's so rewarding to see hundreds of kids walk through our doors with their families and hear about the saving knowledge of, of Christ and, and some of those kids coming to know Christ because of that ministry. See, ministry and serving is exhausting, but it's also extremely rewarding and satisfying. Let that be an encouragement to you today as you consider the discipline of service. Let me tell you this, God rewards the fruit of our labor. He not only expects our service, but he gives us the abilities to serve him. He is faithful to us. Hebrews 6.10 says this, For God is not unjust as to overlook your work and the love that you have shown for his name in serving the saints as you do. He recognizes our service. No matter what your ministry is, no matter if it's a ministry that maybe gets some public recognition, for, for example. You know, maybe your ministry doesn't detail you actually being up on stage or, or, or teaching in Cornerstone Kids or, or maybe as a greeter, a, a place where people can maybe can see you. Maybe your ministry is more behind the scenes that you're the, the person that makes sure we come in each and every week and get this church clean. Or you're part of that ministry that, that makes sure that the lawn is mowed and all those the building plant issues are taken care of. Maybe your ministry is your, your faithful prayer warrior. And people don't necessarily know that. It's not a, necessarily a public face where people are seeing and knowing that you are a prayer warrior. But that doesn't negate the fact that your ministry and your service is so valuable. And God rewards that. It's hard work. But there's fruits and, and there's rewards for that hard work. God rewards the fruits of our labor. The discipline of serving requires work. But the reward is beyond our comprehension, beyond our understanding. So let me ask you a question this morning. And now like the question at the beginning of this message where I ask you to kind of define within yourself what does service mean to you? But now that we've talked about what service is, now that we've talked about the fact that we are gifted to serve and that we are expected to serve, I'm speaking to you now, Christian. What is your service. What are you doing to glorify God? What are you doing with the talents and the abilities that he has given you? What are you doing to serve this church? And what are you doing to serve the church in the broader sense, in the kingdom of God, in the broader sense? Each one of us, no one is, is exempted from this. If you are a believer, there's a time and place in your life where you've accepted Christ into your heart. He has given you the gift of service. He has given you a, a spiritual gift so that you may use it for the benefit and for the edification of his church. So what are you doing with that gift today? Have you struggled with, with volunteering? Have you been maybe one of the crowd that says, my schedule, my, my time, my job, my family, whatever it is, it just takes too much time and I don't think I have the time for it. Well, talk to me about that. I would love to talk to you about how it doesn't need to be something that happens on a Sunday morning. Your service could be a multitude of different things. But at the end of the day, you have to and you should be doing something. You are expected to serve and you were gifted to serve. I want to challenge you today. I want to challenge you to, to think about service. Just like you thought about reading God's word, just like you thought about worship and thought about prayer life. Think about what are you doing with the spiritual discipline of serving. Let's pray this morning. God, thank you again for bringing us here. Thank you for this message. And I pray that as people are watching and listening this morning, that they really take it to heart and, and make some practical application to their own life about what they are doing to serve you and to serve other people. I pray, God, if there are barriers in, in their lives and things that are holding them back from volunteering at church or, and being part of a ministry, Whatever those barriers are, God, I pray that you remove that from them, God. That you help people realize that not only are they expected to serve, but God, they are gifted to serve. We love you, God, and we want to serve you. 
Help us do that today. In your precious and holy name, amen. Hey, thank you so much for, for tuning in today. I pray that this message and this message series has been an encouragement to you. Again, I, I felt it very important to do this, this series on spiritual disciplines, especially during this time that we are physically not able to be together. My goal and my hope and my prayer is that we are applying these disciplines to our lives, that we are incre increasing our own spiritual disciplines so that when we are physically back together, we will have a great solid foundation to which we can build on and continue to build this this church and to continue to glorify God and continue to reach people for Christ. So again, like I say every week, let me know your prayer requests. Make sure that you're, you're tuning into these comments, that you're commenting with us. Let us know how you're doing. We love to connect with you. We love to talk to you. Hey, perhaps you, you've never come to, to, to Cornerstone before. You've just tuned in this morning because someone invited you to watch it or, or just happened to stream by it on our, on our stream, on our, on our feed. I encourage you to, to please reach out, connect with us with the, with the messenger here, and, and leave us a, a, an email or a comment and let us know, hey, I, Pastor Sean, I'd love to talk to you. I'd like to know more about your church. I would love to know more about Christ. And even more importantly, I'd like to know how to develop a relationship with Christ. I would love to talk with you, to pray with you, to encourage you in any way that I can. Like I said, beginning of this message, also, if you have kids, make sure that you are tuning in and, and downloading those lesson plans and making sure you're doing those things with, with Cornerstone Kids and with Crave Student Ministries as well. And again, here at Cornerstone, we also uh, we also finance by our the giving and the faithful giving and the tithes and offerings of of its people. So I will have links for both of our our, our online giving option, and I'll have that link below me right here. I'll also have our our PO box. If you would prefer to send in a check, you can absolutely do that, and the PO box would be listed here below. Uh, I, we love you guys. We miss all of you. I cannot wait for the day that we're all back together. But until that time, we're going to love, we're going to serve, and we're going to encourage each other. Have a great day.